Hey everybody, welcome to Spiky Saturday number 257 on the Mandalik. I am John as always and we are here in what I think is a traditional draft. I think I clicked traditional draft this time uh, of M21 because I still think this format's totally fine. Nine lives of course is not a totally fine card. Uh, we've got some interesting picks here. None of them are cards that I exactly want to first pick but I'd be happy with a Brontodon. I'd be happy with a Feet. I'd be happy with a Ghostlight. I'd be fine with a Pteranodon or a Sabretooth Mauler. This is a very green pack. And green's been fine for me, but not my favorite. I'm honestly super tempted by this roaming ghost light. I really do like blue. Feet is quite good. Um, I, I I like the shrines. I've I've come around on the shrines. I've had a lot of fun with two, three, four, five shrine decks. Um, but I'm not gonna first pick it, especially when it'll wheel if we do happen to get like a a pack two pick one shrine. So I'm gonna take this roaming ghost light and we'll go ahead with it. Uh, quite tired this morning. I stayed up real late purchasing the, uh, or attempting to purchase, finally successfully purchasing the Nintendo Entertainment System Lego set, which I'm going to build on stream. So if you want to hang out and chat magic and chat the world and beer and whatever while I build Lego, make sure you're following twitch.tv slash the Mandalake. It's fun. It's totally different than playing magic. We get a Scorching Dragonfire here, pack one, pick two, which is the best card in this pack by a pretty gigantic margin. Tide Skimmer is quite decent, goes with our Ghost Light, Capture Sphere goes with our Ghost Light, and then there's our, there are other cards. But we're going to take Dragonfire. It's a good, 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 good card. And if I can end up in blue-red again, that'll be great. Uh, so Double Masters came out on MTGO yesterday. I'm I, I think I'm just going to ignore it. I think I'm just going to not even remember that it exists. Um, it's not expensive to do a phantom draft of it, but it's expensive for me to even know what's in the set and how to draft it. Um, and I don't want to put all that effort into it to draft it once or twice. I'm going to keep playing M21 and maybe a little bit more Dominaria. We'll see best of one Dominaria did not sit well with me at all. Uh, I should mention again, I am sponsored by Wizards of the Coast this week. This will be the last day of the week that I am sponsored by them. So thanks to that, we get an enthralling hold, which is not as good as uh, people were hyped up at the start of the format. I think people have started to come down on it a little. It still does pretty good work, um, but you do have to probably get hit with the thing first, and that is real bad. Uh, but I think it's better than the Kinetic Augur here. Kinetic Augur has just not performed the way I want it to uh, in the blue-red deck. So there's a Frost Breath, which I'd really like to wheel here. But yeah, let's take Enthralling Hold. Goes with our Ghost Light. Goes in the deck that I kind of want to be getting into here in blue-red. Uh, we get a pick four Daybreak Charger, which is a very good white card. It's not exactly what we're doing. The red cards are not for me, not what I want. There's a Teferi's Protege here, which I would play. Spark Hunter Masticore, I think, is just a deeply mediocre card. It's a 3-4 three, for three that you have to discard a card to cast it. Eh. The, 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 the text on it's pretty mediocre. We could play this, I suppose. It is a three mana, three, four. Discarding a card is not the absolute worst thing in the world. So maybe we'll pick it up here. It's also 20 gems. Um, and I, I don't think we're missing a protege or a crab. So let's pick it up. But it's not great. Fairly late Malefic Scythe. This, of course, is a, a sign of people listening to the hive mind that black is unplayable. It's not unplayable. If you see a scythe in the first five picks, you should probably be picking it. It's a very good card. Uh, and in fact, I think I'm going to pick it. I don't want these red cards. Capture Sphere is something we definitely would play, but the upside of us getting into black with black potentially being open uh, with a scythe is very big. So let's take the scythe. We get a really, wow. We get a super late waker, a super late rousing read. Wow. Okay. Okay, okay, we can we can work with this. I really like Waker of the Waves. It's just an amazing card. If you can hit seven mana and drop it, you're going to win the game. And if you're not hitting seven mana, you get to basically cycle. It's slightly better than, well, I don't think it's slightly better than cycle. It's a sideways step to cycle. But Rousing Reed also does incredible work. I'm going to take the Waker here, but this is a great blue pack and suggesting to me that blue is open. I would like to lower this curve a little bit. Although Waker does basically count as a two drop. This pack is pretty bad. Anointed Chorister is the best card in the pack by a pretty good margin. Um, but I'm, it's not 
what I want to be doing here. I think we can take a keen glide master because we'll play it um, better than a crypt lurker because we don't know we're in black. I, 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 I think the dragon fire is probably better than the scythe here. So I'd slightly prefer to be in red, but red has not been open since that dragon fire. These are not signals that red is open. Let's take glide master. See where we go. We have the kraken back around or no, this is not my first pack. This is pick eight. This is this is uh, this person's first pack. Or sorry, this person's first pack. So this means like if we get a crack in, crack in here, we might get a crack in back. Um, so I think I will take it. We're going to need to lower our curve or otherwise get into green. Yeah, this is the pack that I was in. Um, so we've got a saber tooth if we do want to try to push into green and I think if we can get some visionaries this is going to look a lot better. Um, there's a blue white duel if we want to potentially just have that splash up. There's a protege which again I would play but I don't think we're going to miss them. Um, I'm going to take this mauler just because with with all of these I think I want to be able to be open to taking visionaries. Yeah, let's take that just in case we end up in green. Um, we get a rise again, which is great with the Kraken and the Waker. Um, Blue-Black has not been my favorite deck. It's pretty swingy, but there's also nothing here. I'm not going to take a run afoul um, as much as I want to be in green. We don't know that we're actually going to get there. That was a bit of a speculation. So let's take the rise again and we'll see where we get. Hopefully we get somewhere. Um, the kinetic auger came back around. It looks like everybody kind of agrees that the card is just not really pulling its weight. There's a frost breath if I am in fact going to be in there and frost breath does kind of work with enthralling hold. Let's take the frost breath since we know we're blue. Uh, wish coin crab since we know we're blue. This technically ramps me, but it ramps me on turn five, which is not what I'm looking for. So we'll take that crab. Uh, here we'll take the duel, but we're not going to play it. We'll take the wall of runes. We're probably not going to play it. And a swamp. All right clarify things for me pack two clarify things we get a tide skimmer a sky scanner a finishing blow so if we're going to be bl uh, blue black then it's a pretty clear blow and i think rise again scythe pushes us towards there we have discard with the spark hunter spark hunter suddenly becomes kind of an upside since we can discard the kraken or discard uh, uh something else that we get this big the trick with the reanimator deck is it's not a reanimator deck you're not going to be reanimating things left and right and left and right you're going to reanimate things once maybe twice um so yeah you got to keep that in mind let's go with the finishing blow let's see if we can get into this so we're really going to want to get like an obsessive stitcher <laughs> now we can reanimate things multiple times for significantly cheaper with uh, built-in loot obsessive stitcher is great it's exactly what we want here uh, i also want that mistral singer i also want that roman ghost light i would probably take the riddle form there's another rise again that might come back around so let's pitch this we are in fact blue black uh, boy howdy are we blue black with a second obsessive stitcher we can reanimate things three times uh, no blue in this pack very notably we get a skeleton archer I guess so this card does have text on it that talks about reanimating and it is trash but garbage don't play it don't play it um, yeah, Skeleton Archer is totally fine. It picks things off. Uh, it picks off the aggro creatures really, really well. Epitaph Golem's also been totally fine, especially if you wind up against a tutelage deck, of course. But we'll take the Archer here. The rare land is unplayable. Um, here we get. Uh, I think somebody was saying they don't like this view. Uh, you're just gonna have to deal with it. Um, because this is the only way that you can see your curve. This view is the view that you should be basically always drafting in. Uh, this view is awful for drafting. I only use it because it's good for looking at because the cards are bigger. Um, yeah, we've got a protege, which I guess we can play. We don't really want read the tides. We don't want a mind rot. We don't want a blood glutton. Yeah, let's take a protege. Lowers our curve a little bit. It loots. I'll take a second archer. Archer's fine. Did we take that alchemist's gift? We did not. 
Alchemist's gift with Skeleton Archer is really cute. You give it Death Touch with the trigger on the stack, and then it just, it's a, it's a Chupacabra. It kills something. Um, yeah, we're not splashing for a Patrician. We're not playing a Rookie Mistake. That would be a Rookie Mistake. All right, deck's looking fine. Deck's looking fine. I'd like to get some more twos. Given that we have three reanimation abilities, I'd like to get one more big thing. Maybe a Gloom Sower. Maybe a, a Gourmand. Uh, we get garbage here. I don't want. I'm not going to play a Larcenist. I'm not going to play a Tome Anima. I'm probably not. I'm. I'm. I'm, I'm not going to play Sanguine Indulgence. We're going to be playing this for four mana, and I don't play this spell for four mana. We're not going to play a Forgotten Sentinel. Let's take the Indulgence, but we're not playing any of those cards. There's the Gloom Sower that I want. Sounds good. Get in the deck. That's the top end. We don't want anything that costs more than like three mana for the rest of our picks. Uh, and so as a result of that, we will pick this four mana card. Probably won't make the deck. We only need one Wish Queen Crab and we may not even need the first one. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. Uh, maybe we splash white, I guess. Maybe we see if we get a good white card to splash. We don't have one yet, but maybe we get... I'm trying to think of one. Baneslayer is white white. Basri is white white. That's a little bit tricky. We'll take the Arc Fiend's Vessel, but to show you just how much I think it's trash but garbage, it's going to sit in the sideboard. Uh, we'll take a Mind Rot, sure. Take a Mind Rot, sure. Take a Mind Rot. Nope. Valorous Steed, last pick. Pardon? Card's fine. All right. We get a Garrick. We can't play a Garrick. I might take Garrick. I'm not going to play it, but I'm not going to play another Rise Again. I'm not going to play a Rookie Mistake. I guess there's a Sky Scanner. I don't think Skyscanner is making our deck, so I'm going to take the 40 gems. Like, 40 gems is not much. Do not get suckered into thinking, whew, I got 40 gems. That's 28, 26 cents. And a draft costs $10. <laughs> but I mean, it's something. It's something. We can't splash it. There's no way in heck we can splash it. Yeah, I'll take it. Um, we get a kite sail freebooter. There's a two drop that I'm happy with. We're not going to play a bad deal. We're not going to play any of the mind rots. We're not going to play wall of runes. Most likely, uh, we would take a second protege. Discontinuity is a super bad spell. Um, so yeah, let's take freebooter. Second scythe or a whale. Now whale, I we've talked about this on stream and on videos. I don't really like it. But if I can have it on turn four, heck, if I can have it on turn five, I like it a whole lot more. We're definitely going to take the whale here. As much as I would love a second scythe, a second scythe would be great. But let's take this whale. Going to have a whale of a time. Um, there's nothing really here for us. Uh, we don't really want to play the first Glide Master, so we don't want the second one. We don't want a Lofty Denial. We don't want a Tome Anima. I guess maybe we would play a duress. We're still a little bit uh, waiting on playables. We had some uh, off picks there at the start. Teferi's Ageless Insight, if you would draw a card except for the first one, we're not going to. I guess we when we loot, yeah, a card is just super not for us. This is if you're in the tutelage deck, and even then I think you could just play an opt, and you'd probably win more than playing this card. Because it doesn't draw you a card when you play it. It does nothing when you play it. Um, yeah, we'll take a duress, and it's going to hang out in the main board for now. Uh, um, a tutelage, eh? We're looking for playables. We have two looter, three looters. Yeah. We're not exactly a tutelage deck, but welcome to the team, tutelage. Welcome to the team. Uh, nothing I super want here. Maybe we actually do have a village rights. Uh, it'll draw for the tutelage. It'll draw us cards. It'll put something into the yard, perhaps dodge removal, perhaps something that will bring back 
So yeah, I think a village rate is fine here. Um, which is good because there's nothing here we want. We're going to take this Blood Glutton, but not play it. Pestilent Haze for the sideboard is great. Honestly, maybe even the main board. Maybe even the main board. We probably don't want this many gigantic drops. I think I can probably ditch the Kraken. Yeah, I think we can main board that. Uh, we'll take the Rise again, but we're not going to play the second one. We'll take a bad deal, but we're not going to play it. Super late swift response. Okay, second Scythe, Deathbloom Thalid. Um, 14 creatures, eh? Let's take the second Scythe and let's keep Pestilent Haze in the sideboard. Let's do that. All right, so let's clean up here. Infernal Scarring, Concordia Pegasus. So I'm still thinking about maybe pitching that King Glide Master, but we'll see. 80 gems, woohoo. Guess I should record that. Um, yeah, so what do we got here? 9-8, 9-8 swamps. Let's trade these swamps out for the swag value Phyrexian swamp, shall we? Shall we? Uh, where do swag value swamps live? Right here. All right, nine, eight. Um, so what's sitting in the sideboard? Just that Pestilent Haze, eh? Yeah, I think we just want King Glide Master to be somebody to hold the scythe and then die, basically. So we'll keep that. Um, I think this deck looks very interesting. It's not the aggro decks that we've played a whole lot of lately. So let's go into match one. All right, into match one. And yes, I am in fact in best of three. Super excited about this deck. It looks really fun. I really, really do like the blue black reanimator decks. I think people are down on them a bit too much. They're tricky to get together. They definitely require the obsessive stitchers, but I think they can be really good. If we drop a pursued whale on turn four, people are going to be sad. People are going to be real, real sad. Our opponent is wasting time changing the color of their wolf instead of doing their mulligan. Let's prepare to pre-mute that wolf. There we go. Uh, single Swamp is not how we want to start, start this game. So this is a, an instamol. Instamol. Interestingly, on the draw, on the draw, any land gives us Freebooter and an island gives us Glide Master, but I'm not going to risk it. <laughs> Looks about right. All right, well... We get the scry to help fix this mull, I suppose. And let's mute this person's wolf. They took all the time to turn it green. And I don't care. Well, this wall's gonna pick up a sword. Gloom Sower. No, no, we need to play things faster than that. And we have other things we can pitch to reanimate. Red, red. Let's see if we're going to want to pull that Pestilent Haze in or not. I think people have definitely settled on this being a super duper mega fast room room aggro set, and I don't agree. Um, but we'll go with that. All right, let's drop this Malefic Scythe and pass the turn. I'm assuming you can probably hear that shrill beeping of something backing up outside. Mono red so far, so Chandra's Pyroling is not really a threat against this wall of runes. Short of them, they have to hit us, hit us for a damage, right? Then they'll get double strike plus one. Arsonist, sure, 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 sure. This is all fine. These archers are gonna be amazing very shortly. Uh, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna equip the scythe to the wall of runes and we're gonna pass the turn. A tap out so that we can kill the Hobble Fiend with the first archer will be absolutely amazing. So let's hope we can do that. Fear of the Bitten. Not a huge fan of that happening. Not a huge fan of that happening at all. And apparently I clicked through blocks because I thought we were still in attacks. Cool. Cool. Um, okay, well, Roman Ghost Light's going to solve that problem. So, bop, 
ba -da -ba -ba. We're going to go Skeleton Archer, shoot the Arsonist, they'll sack the Arsonist in response, that's fine. So they're all in, and all we have to do is just not die. And we are going to pretty heftily ruin them. Pretty heftily ruin them. So Pestilent Hay is currently hitting two of their things prior to suiting up. Uh, and we'll throw this wall of runes in front of that hobble fiend to uh, get the... We're not going to click through that. Sure. My scythe grows. Oh, I guess we can't roam in Ghostlight if we don't hit a land. Well, we've got Frost Breath to buy us some time. Hey, we hit the land anyways. All right, so let's roam in Ghostlight, bounce that hobble friend, <clears throat> make them very sad. Perhaps even head explode? No head explode. And I'll come in for three, sure. You got it. Sure. If you're going to use up a combat trick, I'm super happy with that. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. Play out your hobble friend. Double vision. Okay. Well, in that case, what we're going to do is duress you. See what this other card is. It's a Hellkite Punisher. Okay. So that is a seven drop. So we need to kill them before uh, they get to seven. We need to do that ASAP. So what we're going to do is suit up the ghost light and smash, get in for five. Because this is now a race. We're going to hold this frost breath for as long as we can. So we don't know what they drew here. Is it going to be another fear of the bitten? <laughs> Holy crap. All right. Well, tap those both down. <laughs> Our opponent is all in. All right. Finishing blow is going to be really nice for that Punisher as well. So we get in for five. We skeleton archer their hobble fiend. Hobble fen, hobble fiend. I tried to say it right. I tried to say it right instead of hobble friend. And then it just didn't work. So we'll kill off him. Um, we won't move the scythe over just because I don't want to open this up to dying to a Scorching Dragon Fire. Land, cool, 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 cool. Uh, let's get in for eight, take up to two. And this finishing blow should finish this off. Got him. All right, they are all in, all in. How do we stop them from being all in? So Petulant Haze hits Hobble Friend before stuff. It doesn't hit stuff when it gets Fear of the Bitten on it, which is the big issue with me not wanting to put this in. What I kind of want to do is bring in another Crab or something. I'll actually keep the Duress in. It does hit those Fears of the Bitten, although it doesn't really because they're so cheap that they're probably not going to sit in hand. Also, wow, the, the the parallax effect, which usually makes the cards look weird, makes the weird veins on that look really, really cool and disturbing. Um, hmm. I think we can maybe just go back in. Like maybe the maybe the blood glutton has a home here as a way of gaining some life. I just don't want to load up on fives. You know, you're a two. Yeah, I don't want to load up on fives. The wall is actually pretty important. Frost breath is actually pretty important. I think we're just going to go back in. I just, I. Theoretically, there should be a lot of stuff for the haze to hit. I just don't know that there's going to be. I think I want that more against red white. Not against all in red aura aggro. 
because that aura puts literally every creature out of range of pestilent haze um all right we get a freebooter on two and then we'll see where we can go um if we can get this crab down we might be in pretty good shape <clears throat> but this is definitely going to be a case of go faster than they go or else and no one drop is pretty good for us hardfire emulator is decent um that's obviously going to shoot this freebooter but hey we get rid of the emulator right i will take one of your man this deck is all in i have a feeling they're probably playing like a ludicrous number of low lands which means this punisher is actually punishing for their deck so let's see we're coming in for two sure <clears throat> and they're doing nothing that i like that i like so if we can stick something big off this stitcher we're in pretty good shape and heck even putting this crab down is going to be decent uh our our concern is if they put a fear on this it's going to be a four four that doesn't get through the crab but it gets pretty dang close they're going to drop the weird that's fine this is giving me all kinds of time um that weird's going to get big that they're going to have two four fours so we do need to get the crab down here and then we can loot possibly straight into a rise again but this is going to be a little bit rough for a little bit here this is definitely a deck that is designed to just steal wins okay sure they're gonna shock that with that one mana spell they're gonna play a one mana spell and then another one mana spell this is gonna be a five five this is gonna be a three four five six possibly a seven something <laughs> and congrats opponent you stole this game uh, but this is not something i would ever recommend actually doing you're gonna lose a billion games where you stumble um all right well they both have trample eh I think we're just going to take it. Let's loot. Pitch a protege. Let's take it. This is always have no, they have trample. No, neither of them have trample. It's just because they had um crash through. So still in some significant trouble here. We can drop a Spark Hunter Mastercor. and then pass the turn we can currently block the wish coin crab but they've got an, we're gonna lose we're gonna lose to this which will happen sometimes but it's definitely not how i recommend approaching what other one mana spells do you have none good all right so we're gonna block the eight eight and we're going to take five. If we can keep this Spark Hunter Mastercore up with three mana available, we might be in some amount of shape. So let's take five. Let's hope we just don't die. We might just die. And if we do, cool. Cool, whatever. <laughs> what a bad deck. Uh, but it'll steal games. It'll steal games. So yeah, like Pestilent Haze doesn't hit things fast enough they grow too much so we just need to go back in and we need to hope that it's one of the like 60 percent of games where their deck doesn't curve out properly and they lose we'll play first uh we have to maul so we're already boned we'll keep this but it's a risk they've already mauled so that's good for us we'll pitch a land our waker can perhaps find what we need drop the land past the turn probably lead with the scythe here there's a one drop let's see how many spells it gets put onto it next turn fear of the bitten <laughs> hmm yeah, sure, whatever. Hit me for three. You got it. 
Uh, um, all right, we are going to go with a Spark Hunter Masticor pitching, I think, the Wall of Runes. Yep. Because this Masticor with a Scythe and being indestructible might put a little bit of a stop. We're going to have to take another three here, but that's fine. That's fine. Taken three. They have to attack. They have no choice. Double power? Sure. This is such a... <laughs> oh boy. Oh boy. No attacks. They have to attack into this and we get to uh, give it indestructible. So I think we're actually pretty close to kind of punishing this deck the exact way that it gets punished, which is they didn't win the game on turn three. So rip to them. Was that another? It was another Unleash Fury. <clears throat> Fear of the Bitten, sure. Uh, well, congrats. It doesn't die. So these are just going to bounce off of each other. Um, yeah, no point in wakering at the start of this turn. <clears throat> Let's block. Let's give it indestructible. They bounce off. And they've got nothing in hand. That I like. So let's pitch this waker, grabbing a freebooter. Seems good. Opponent, show me your secrets. Um, have they ever shown me anything that I give even the slightest damn about with this double vision? I don't think so. And they're sitting on what, four lands? One, two, three, four. Yeah, we'll, t we'll take the double vision. As long as we have this Masticore alive, we're good. We're good. Land, sure. We're kind of really looking for that roaming ghost light, eh? Block, indestructible. Boop. <clears throat> Duress. I would like to continue to see your secrets. Get rid of that. Um, and then. And then, and then, and then. Boy, you know what I might actually do? God, I kind of want to double block and kill that arsonist. I kind of really want to do it. Pass the turn, though. <clears throat> Oh, I should have attacked with that Freebooter. I forgot that we didn't cast it this turn. So we're uh, getting really dangerously close to them having a Hellkite Punisher <clears throat> if they draw it, if they're playing more than one. Uh, another land, okay. Uh, so, one, two, three, four, five, six. So we can move the Scythe over to the freebooter and attack in for two pass the turn <clears throat> we cannot let them hit the hellkite punisher that would be the worst thing in the world all right hoping they're still flooding here um, Frost Breath is cute, but not quite good enough just yet. Let's get in for two and pass the turn. <clears throat> Looks like they're flooding, which is the other way this deck is going to lose really, really badly. Let's block. Let's give Indestructible. And yeah, this is why I'm, I'm saying that this deck is not what you want to do, because if your opponent interacts with you, you're pretty ruined. 
pretty, pretty, pretty ruined. Um, so we're going to... Uh, I really don't want to risk not having the mana up for that Spark Hunter. So we're still not going to drop that Skeleton Archer. Because then we'd only have two mana up to keep the Master Core alive. And the Master Core is currently how we're winning this. So let's keep going this way. At some point, we will have to Village Rites to find removal for the Dragon if they, uh, in fact, find it. Let's go to Indestructible. <clears throat> Boop. <laughs> Another Skeleton Archer, okay. Um, there's a point as well where I'm going to have to be really worried about a crash through. But that's not this point. There's also a point where we're going to start attacking with this Spark Hunter Master Core so that we can Frost Breath on their turn. Three, four, five. It might be... It might be next turn. We'll have to see. They're going to Scorching Dragon Fire that. Well, I'm going to draw a couple of cards because that seems good to me. <clears throat> Plus the creature dies, which means the scythe gets the counter, which means that goblin arsonist is no longer sitting as pretty as it once was. They're going to play double vision, sure. Card is not good. Attack me, you got it, we'll block, we'll give indestructible. Hooray! Hey, there we go. Let's punish this person. Left, right, and center. Bounce that. Absolutely ruin them. And there we go. That's why you don't pay, play decks like that. That's why you don't play decks like that. Play decks like that in best of one, where you're going to absolutely shock your opponent, and there's no game two. There, there, there's no chance of them ever coming back. Um, yeah, we're going to jam this scythe onto the ghost light. Uh, so this is five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, actually. Five, six, seven, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, we're going to come in with team <clears throat> because they're dead to a skeleton archer here. They are dead to a skeleton archer. Pew pew, pew 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 there we go one and oh a little bit butt clenchy but yeah that that's that's the extreme downside of that style of deck be very 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 cautious about it leave that to best of one leave that to you're at your first pro tour you're never going to make it to a pro tour ever again in your life you don't know how to draft do that and you might win that pro tour because you're going to steal some wins um but over the course of a magic career you, you need to play a little bit more uh uh consistently you want to you want to have a a 60 win rate over your life rather than a 100 win rate in one draft um this is a bad hand so we're going to mull that um similarly awful but a swamp gives us freebooter and any land gives us a master course and we'll keep and we'll put village right on the bottom we'll put rise again on the bottom we have other ways of reanimating and we don't have to reanimate to win black white a sure thing on top a hey. Look at that. Freebooter, always had it. Let's rip out a Griffinary. Uh, or let's rip out nothing, eh? Um, God, I hate these lands. They're very pretty, and they're very hard to process. So this is three different colors. This is black, blue, white. Sitting on a Tide Skimmer, a Gaggle Master, a Basri's Acolyte. So it looks like they are blue-white skies splashing black for something. There's a Griffinary. Okay. <laughs> Alrighty then. Let's attack in for one. Let's Spark Hunter Master Core pitching the. I think Enthralling Hold's gonna be pretty good. I think Island's gonna be pretty good. Let's pitch the Village Rights. 
we need the island so that we have enthralling hold online uh, on whatever next land we draw. Concordia Pegasus is fine. We can smash in with Mastercore on that. So let's do so. Pop down a protege. Unfortunately, this Gaggle Master is going to make a Griffin, and we're going to be in trouble. We're going to be in trouble. Uh, Obsessive Stitcher is a bit of a start. Uh, we get to attack in here for probably four. And drop the Stitcher, pass the turn. And we're going to need to see if we can get a big old thing real quick. Big old thing real quick. There's your bird. Here's going to be your next bird. Congrats. You got the birds. Uh, we got a Frost Breath, eh? Do we want to keep pushing? Is there anything worthwhile to keep pushing? Not terribly. Not terribly. Let's attack in with the Master Core since we can give it Indestructible. I think they'll just take three here. They have read the card, they take three. We'll pass the turn. We'll loot with the Stitcher and maybe Frost Breath. <clears throat> maybe Frost Breath. Tide Skimmer, sure thing. I think they're playing around a uh, counter spell here. So we're taking four, five, six, seven. I'll take the attack since we can attack back in. Oh, they get to draw a card too. Boy, they've got a good deck. Um, yeah, we'll take the six here. <clears throat> and we'll loot and try to find something. Revitalize, sure. <laughs> They're doing the Griffin Airy thing. Uh, we're going to pitch the Frost Breath because we found the island to play uh, Enthralling Hold here. So I'm going to say, hey, can I have that Gaggle Master? Thank you. How nice of you. Um, so we can attack in with the Spark Hunter. That's about it. The Acolyte's going to be a bit of a problem because they're going to have a 3-3 and a 3-4 flyer. Gaggle Master does not block either of those. Trades with them, but doesn't block them. Interesting giving it to the Pegasus. And they're going to race. They are in a race situation. So we'll take it. We'll go to five. And I think we die. <laughs> I think that's the next order of operations here. Let's pitch that. Yeah, that's a whole lot of lands. So what do we have here? We have got a block on the three, four. We've got a block on a two, two. We're taking four, so we're not dead. We're not dead. We're not dead. Let's get in with the Master Core. We're probably dead, but we're not dead yet. We are just basically dead. Hit them in the face. Pass the turn. So let's see. If we can have them not get Griffin Airy down, that's a start. But the Flyers are still going to be a problem. Pestilent Haze hits Griffins. And that's it. It hits literally nothing else because everything else is an X3. That is true. Yeah, opponent's just got a fantastic deck here. So we are going to need to block here and here to not die. Nope, we still just die. I thought I had mathed that out. Oh, we didn't have counters on these griffins before. That's why I didn't think we were dead. <clears throat> cool. Well, that's awful. Um... There is very little we can do about that other than hope they don't draw well. This is uh, the definition of a Candyland game of magic. We are going to flip our cards and see whose cards are better. There are going to be very little decisions <laughs> and, and that is how this game is going to go. We'll play first. Yet again, absolute trash garbage hands. Uh, we'll keep it because it's got a free booter. And that's like the start to us getting rid of the Griffin area or something, maybe. Go to the bottom. Not a card that I want to see. 
we get to pull out a feat, a revitalize, or a denial. I'm going to pull out the feat, I think. Yeah, let's pull out the feat, but they've got Patrician and Gaggle Master. They have flyers in hand. We die. We die. They're going to pull my Frost Breath. It's their only choice. Oh, Rise Again. Rise Again is also a choice, of course. Uh, we get a Scythe. Scythe is starting, but I mean, maybe they get screwed as well. But I mean, them getting screwed involves them still having a card draw, still having another 1-3. All right, all right, we're starting. We're attempting to get into this. Let's get in for two. If we can buy, like, a couple more turns of them missing, maybe we're still in this. We're not still in this. <laughs> We're not still in this at all. Griffin Airy is down. Yelp. Yelp. Magic is a very well designed game with zero flaws. Um, it's fantastically designed. It's perfect. <laughs> Indulging Patrician, sure. Cool, pass the turn. Welp, let's take one. Kind of two, because they gained a life. Ugh, they can counter whatever our next play is as well. It feels real bad. It feels real bad. I'm not sure there's any way for us to actually get back into this. Revitalize, they're going to get a griffin. Yep. We're going to lose three life. Yep. So we do get the island. So we do have one chance to cast one thing. I guess it has to be the stitcher. But like yet again, this is why this whale frigging sucks. It's not good when your opponent has a board state. The only time that it's good is if your opponent is not attacking you because they would lose everything, in which case you're already in a fantastic spot. The board stalls that people think of in their mind where you're going to play this pursued whale and they're going to attack you and you're going to kill everything don't exist they don't exist <laughs> they exist sometimes very rarely but they don't exist as much as the time where you're gonna lose just as much as uh they're gonna lose so we can finishing blow <clears throat> the three three doesn't even do anything I guess we're finishing blowing the 3-3. Three, three. They're going to counter it. They're going to feed it, sure. Oh, we knew they had to feed, whatever. Wolf. Wolf, wolf, wolf. Well, our opponent drew the better cards. Ah, uh, we're not going to play this one. Out. Four, five, six, seven. We're taking seven. We're going to six. Uh, I don't think we need to see anything more there. All right. One and one. One and one opponent had a significantly better deck, and it was really up to what cards were on top, and our car our cards were not lands. So we're gonna go into game three. Or match three. See if we can get a two one here. I think this deck deserves a two one, but uh the lands have not been on our sides today. Yep. Um honestly with a scry. With the scry, I'm gonna keep it. Because at this point, Arena is going to screw us on lands, however it feels like it. <laughs> Show me a land. Thank you. We'll keep that on top. And then we just have to find one more, which is still going to be significantly tricky. But this at least should hold off any early aggro. <clears throat> and if we do hit any land, we've got Tutelage online with a Protege perhaps coming up. We might have a chance. I know some people might have done an instant mull there. Uh, if we did not have the Wall of Runes in that hand, instant mull. Uh, but that Scry giving you the chance to kind of fix that bad hand, I think is worth it. 
Masked Blast Guard, Masked Black Guard is fine. Mountain, sure. So red, black, we're looking at probably a little bit aggro, some sacrifice. <clears throat> but we need arena to give us proper lands or we are not in this. Not in this at all. And then I'll go off and I'll play a well-designed board game instead today. Deathbloom Thalid, sure. So we're going to be looking at taking about two a turn. Yeah, that sucks. Attack with both. Attack with both. This one and this one at my face. Maze Mind Tome, that's a good card. At my face, we block the three, we take the two. There's a land. So are we still tutelaging? I think we are because we're gonna get a loot off of it. Um, we're perhaps gonna let them start sweating a little bit. So they're gonna draw a card because maybe that card was the one that they didn't want to be milled. Um, we are going to pitch. Boy, a lot of these are good cards. I wonder if we're gonna pitch the Roman Ghost Light, to be honest. Skeleton Archer kills the Black Guard. Kite Sail Freebooter takes something out of their hand. Village Rights saves us a little bit later, draws cards, mills them. Wish Coin Crab blocks really well. This is repeatable mill. This pulls something else out of their hand. I think it is the Ghost Light, especially since we're so far off from casting it. Got rid of a Finishing Blow. That's pretty good. Pretty good. Best top deck we could hope for is like a Swamp here. Grasp of Darkness, my, my wall. They know that they need to go fast. That is a correct assessment. If we get a land, I think we're going to Skeleton Archer kill the Blackguard. We do not get a land, but we get a Frost Breath. Frost Breath does just buy us a turn, eh? I'm just going to buy us a turn. Tap, tap. <clears throat> We're still in significant trouble. Getting land screwed like this is no bueno. Especially multiple games in a row. Havoc Jester. All right, that's a big problem. 5-5 five five is going to be very hard for us to deal with. We find a land, so we're starting to get there. I don't think we can hyper mill them out quite fast enough. Uh, so we are going to need to hit their hand. We're going to have to take five, but we get to hit their hand twice here with Freebooter and then Duress. Or if we don't see anything for the Duress, we don't have to do that. Um, yikes. The Scythe is pretty bad. Um, we're going to have to take the Grasp and the Grasp, I think. But I don't think we're winning this one. Could have told you that from when we started to get mana screwed, but I don't think we're going to win that. Yeah, we take the grass, but they can't kill the freebooter. So they're going to play this. They're going to attach it to that. We're going to take six, and we're on a two-turn clock. That's the end of us. Let's hope in game two we can just actually draw reasonable frigging mana amounts. They don't go for the scythe. Why? Because you want to drop an ogre and the scythe and the mass blocker. All right, they want to go wide. Fair. Um, so we're dead a million seven ways from Sunday. So we can discard there because we're taking four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. We are dead. Uh, so we're gonna bring in pestle and haste because it actually does hit a whole lot of things on their side. We're gonna pull up the. Uh, they had a lot of removal. They had a lot of removal. They had grasp, grasp. Finishing blow. This is somebody who does not listen to the hive mind and got massively rewarded for it. Uh, we're going to pitch the enthralling hold. I think this card, I keep putting in the deck because I keep hearing people saying this card's really good. And I keep trying it, and it's always trash. 
it's always so bad. You can't play a mind control that you have to get hit with first. So we'll go back in with Pestilent Haze. Um, if we can draw it and get a whole bunch of value out of it, I think that'll be a, a huge game turner. Um, opponent's still sideboarding. I think our hope here might be that they think we're a full-on tutelage deck. Our hope here is that they put in like 15 extra cards and mess their deck up. Did they do it? Did they do it? Ah, oh, they didn't do it. We're going to play first. Um, hey, look, it's lands, but slow, but we'll keep. And it's the friggin' whale. It's not going to do a damn thing. Can't even reanimate properly. <laughs> Can't even be in our hand when we can actually do something with it. No two drop. Cool. You've got a mass black guard in hand. We all know it. I know it. You know it. The people of YouTube know it. There it is. So we get to skeleton archer it. So that'll be Dece. Assuming that they tap out here. I'll take two. That's fine. There's the tap out. <laughs> Complain about screw. You get flooded. That's the way it goes. That's the way it goes. I guess we have seven. We can play Pursued Whale on, t on time. And if we can keep the board a little bit clear, maybe the whale will do something. I still don't feel like it does something. We'll trade here. That's fine. We're not in a race situation right now. Uh, free booter. I would like to see your hand, please. Yep, I'll take that. Come on, come on. We're not even going to gonna get to play magic here. We're dead. We lose. Unless there's, a, unless there's a finishing blow on top, we lose. We've lost the game. They played their mythic. They played their better candy land card. Um, yeah, we're going to drop a wish coin crab past the turn. <laughs> no magic playing for us. I've played against this card so many times and I'm so sick of it. All right, so they're on mostly lands in hand. But I do think our only answer is finishing blow. So we've got a one in 28 chance over the next th three turns. Why would you attack in with that? Because you have a grasp of darkness. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We're playing a pursued whale next turn. Sure, use your grasp of darkness. Oh, it doesn't even kill the one one, damn it. That's fine. That's fine. All right, let's play this game-winning whale. Look at it win the game for us. Look at it win the game for us. Won the game for us so good. So we block the ogre. We take five, six, seven. We go to three. They basically just have to play a creature to kill us with the terror. I hate this frigging whale. It's so bad. Like, it's it's essentially a vanilla 7 mana 8 8. And there's the ogre. We're dead. Cool. Cool. I think that deck deserved better, but Arena was not having it today, and that's what Arena will do sometimes. That's magic. That's the downside of magic. Magic has its flaws. Absolutely. Uh, let me know how M21's going for you. Let me know if you're doing double masters, because I'm going to ignore it. I'm not going to play it. I'm not going to put time into a format that's around for like a week or two, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, but let me know how it's going in the comments down below. As always, if you do have any questions, comments, or suggestions, you can find me over on Twitter, Twitch, and Facebook. You can find me at uh, patreon.com slash if you want to help out that way. That is uh, awesome. Uh, being a patron or being a Twitch sub gets you access to the Discord, which we just refreshed with categories and organization and a bot and all kinds of stuff over there. We've been organizing tournaments. You saw the Gladiator tournament. You saw a match of the Jumpstart tournament. I'm hoping to get some draft tournaments going. I might try running a, uh, a board game with people. We'll see. We'll see if people are interested in it. Um, but yeah, you can check all that out if you're a patron or a Twitch sub. Uh, like I said, I'm going to be doing those bonus streams building that Nintendo Lego set. So check those out. It's fun. You may think it sounds boring watching me play Lego, but the fact that the, the, the point is we're also chatting. We're, we're chatting a lot primarily about magic for a couple of hours. Um, but yeah, let me know whatever you want to let me know. Like, share, subscribe, and I'll see you all next time.